sexy. Two egg. Your mind, it is like a gun. And you want to load it up with little itty bitty bullets of knowledge. What's going on family? It's your guy Boro, the Lucky Libra, and thank you for tuning in to another episode, alright? As you can see by the title, we about to kick into another series. As y'all can see how I'm doing my videos, I'm doing certain things in order. So, you know, we started off with the archetypes and then we got into, you know, the low and high vibes of the sign. And we started getting into some planetary placements, the moon, Mercury, Mars, Venus, getting into the inner planets. We haven't delved into the outer planets so much, but you know, we there's still so much to get into. Planets through the houses. I want to do a constant through the houses series okay but um right now I feel like it's important for us to buckle down on the debilitations of our zodiac sign okay because this is very important to understand so if you guys look at the archetype video series that I did when we look at the archetype of a zodiac sign we're looking at the element all right whether that's air earth fire or water we're looking at the planetary ruler before we get into the plans, we're looking at the modality, if it's cardinal, fixed, or mutable, okay? We're looking at the planetary ruler, what planet rules it. We're looking at what planet is exalted in that energy, okay? We're looking at the planet that is in its fallen state, and we're looking at the planet that's debilitated. Now, when we look at the energies that's exalted, in a zodiac sign and the energies that's debilitated and it and in its false state in that zodiac sign or in the house okay right now we're just talking about the zodiac signs understand that that's the archetype of the sign you don't have to have the specific placement so let me clarify let's use Aries for example Aries is cardinal fire ruled by Mars the sun is exalted there. The sun is exalted in Aries in the first house. When we look at uh, Saturn, which would be in its fall state in Aries, okay? And then when we look at Venus, which is debilitated in Aries, we know Venus deals with love, appreciation, relating, compromising, balancing, okay? That's a scary word for Aries right there, compromise, okay? And then we know Saturn deals with reality, time, organization, structure. So, you don't have to have Venus in Aries. You don't have to have Saturn in Aries or Venus in the first house or Saturn in the first house. But when you look at the house that you have Aries in, not only is that going to be the house that you're passionate in, that's not only is that going to be a house that you're pretty self-assertive and goal-oriented in, aka Aries archetype, cardinal fire ruled by Mars, you also going to have a debilitation of Venus in that house. It's going to be hard to compromise and relate and find balance with others in that house. You're going to have a fallen Saturn influence in that house. So your Saturn energy in that house when it comes to responsibilities, doing things with more time, diligence, patience, all right, and being more practical, that's going to be debilitated there too. So you have to bring the positive and the negatives, which I always tell you positive and negatives, like uh, there's positive and negatives to every energy. So the debilitation going to be in that area, whether you got energies in that area or not. So if your son is in Aries, your sun is exalted. Your sun is in its strongest, in its, you could say exaltations is pretty much the strongest peak energy of, for a planet where a planet likes to be. But you know, if you have the sun in Leo or the sun in the fifth house is as powerful, but the sun in, when we talk about exaltations, you have to understand because this energy is at such a high peak, it can overdo itself. It can become exhausted a lot of the time. So the sun, if you got the sun in Aries, your actions, all right, come with high vitality, a high charge, very passionate, real self-assertive with your personal outlook, all right? Pretty courageous, learn from the stumbles, sturdy, 
okay? A lot of endurance with the sun here. Because the sun also represents your vitality, your body, your appearance, your movement, and the head. Real headstrong, okay? AKA, it could be, build mental toughness here with the sun in Aries. Now, the sun represents your actions. So, with the sun being in Aries, this person's actions is going to have a debilitation of Venus. Because Venus is debilitated in that Aries archetype. And then that sun's person, that sun's, that person with the sun in Aries, their actions and their personal outlook is going to have to learn how to deal with Saturn energy since it's in its fallen state. And when we talk about planets in its fallen state, it's opposite from the where they're exalted at. And debilitations is going to be uh, opposite from where it's home. So Venus is home in Libra and in the seventh house. But when it's opposite, you know, boom, now it's debilitated. It's in Aries or the first house where it doesn't like to be. 180 degrees away from home. When we look at uh, planets in their fallen state, this is a planet that's opposite from where it's exalted at. So Saturn is exalted in Libra, exalted in the seventh house. So when it's in the first house or when it's in Aries, it's in its fallen state. It's resting, it's sleep, it's in its subconscious, AKA, it's debilitated when it's trying to do, uh, you know, utilize that energy. Sometimes it could feel vulnerable dealing with that energy. It could deal with insecurities dealing with that energy. At times, it could either create illusions or not understand that it's capable of utilizing and maximizing that energy. So it comes with a lot of lessons having to deal with, you know, strengthening that frequency vibration. And we could also look at fallen states as an energy that we could also look at them as an energy that, you know, it's gonna play out, it's gonna play out scenarios where we do things with that energy that we never thought we could do before. So that's why I say it plays out these vulnerable leap of faith moments a lot of the time when we talk about fallen states uh, of uh, planetary influences. So that's what I want you to understand. And this is also what you can apply when you look at your chart. When you look at your chart and you're looking at empty houses, even though you're seeing the constellation in that house, you're understanding all that and all the energies of an archetype. So y'all go back and watch my archetype videos to understand how all them energies would affect a house. And to go more in depth, you want to see the house lords of each house. And the house lords would be the planet that rules the sign in the house. Okay, so if you are an Aries Ascendant, you got Aries in the first house, your first house lord or house ruler, go by both names, would be Mars, because Mars rules Aries. So for the first house lord, you'll have more of a direction to understand how to grow and evolve when it comes to personal expression, your personal outlook in the world, and how to deal with your personal people, places, and things in your life, your personal issues, you have more of a grasp and direction how to deal with these things by seeing what house Mars is in. Because that's the house, that, that that's the planet that governs that first house. So wherever Mars is at, it's going to bring them issues to the first house. So this is how we see what's, how our personal issues and our personal life is the most active by seeing where our first house lord is at. This is the area of life that's shown us why we go through certain experiences in our personal life. It shows us the influences that's attached to how we personally express ourselves. It shows us where our personality is naturally always going to shine the brightest when we attach this frequency vibration to our personality or how we personally express ourselves. So, you know, these are just things to keep in mind when we're looking at uh, the constellations as a whole. Okay? We have to always consider the debilitation. We always have to consider that, that, uh, the, that fallen state energy. All right, and I just used the Aries and Libra by example, but this is just an intro for that series that we about to get into. All right, family. So for the most part, yeah, I already know what it is, and the reason and the reason why I'm, I want to do this series because when we understand our debilitations and our fallen states, especially when it comes to our sun moon rising, we understand our natural crutches. We understand the energy that we don't we don't deal well with. Now this is helping us to see where we could do more work at, see how we could prosper in certain areas of our life, understanding that we may not necessarily be in certain environments or doing certain things that correlate to our energies. So we could put our, we could make a conscious shift in understanding that we're dealing with that energy to apply ourselves for the moment being or for the experience that you're involved with at the moment. Okay, whether it's career, relationship, experience, etc. 
So family, y'all already know what it is. It's your guy, the Lucky Libra, tuning in and tuning out. Make sure you tap into my website to connect with the Lucky Libra. Make sure you check into the Patreon where I'm getting into more exclusive content, celebrity industry breakdowns, monthly classes, and more. We on the road to 100, so go ahead and tap in and see if that's something that aligns with your journey, family. But until then, peace.